Hi, this is Terence Lamb from Stylex Studio with another episode. In this episode, I'm going to demonstrate how you can retouch dead looking grass in your photos within Adobe Lightroom. This is one of my more popular presets that people ask during many of my in-person workshops. So I'm sharing it here exclusively online for everyone to appreciate. I am using Adobe Lightroom 5.7.1, but this certainly applies to all versions of 5. Sometimes you just can't control the look of grass due to weather conditions or environment. The background might also be just perfect, but the grass you have your subjects on may have yellow patches and dead areas. This is an image I've taken on the Sony A7 Mark II and the FE 70 to 200 F4 G lens taken here in Victoria at the Squamut Lagoon, a great bird sanctuary that I go to. Before we begin, I'm going to make some presumptions that you've already done your standard adjustments to your images and made sure that your white balance is adjusted if necessary. So I've already made my adjustments here in this image. I'm ready to go. It's just this grass is looking a little bit sickly. One of the easiest ways to correct for yellowish or dead grass is to use the adjustment brush. This is found in your tool bar above your basic palette. You can see that there is the adjustment brush, the one that looks like a little brush on the end there. You can also select it by hitting the K key. You can see that I already have my brushes loaded up and ready for this tutorial. I'm going to explain point by point each of the settings. First, I adjust the color temperature to basically head for a strong green cast. So if the grass is already yellow, this is already set up to head towards that greenish tone. So my temperature is set for 21. My tint is set for minus six. Next, I adjust the exposure to minus uh, 0.5. Dead or yellow grass have a higher luminance, so exposure reduction is done to give a much richer and lush grass. Contrast is adjusted up to 16 to give some variation between the blades of grass. A little bit of shadow detail in the, in the darker areas, but just to get, give some more definition to grass. Highlight is taken up to 100. Again, this is to compensate for the high luminance of yellow grass and to recover the highlights. I've set my shadow to six, minus 69 to also bring more contrast and a little bit more shadow to the blades of grass. You can make that adjustment later if you, if you don't like the shadows being that dark, you can adjust it so that it's either flat or even lighter. My clarity is set to 41 to give me micro contrast. So that way, as I'm adjusting, you'll be able to see a little bit more of the definition of the grass. Saturation is boosted up to about 17, and that's where I, I generally find that this is all pretty much what I like to set it at. The last thing I set is my color. So as you can see, my color adjustments, I, I tend to start, go somewhere towards a little bit of a lighter tinge and head towards yellow. You can go even a little yellower, just depends. You don't want to go too far over to the blue spectrum, but I always start to set off my, my saturation level down at a little lower end of this uh, color selection palette. Once you've set all that up, click on the pull down menu beside the effects section there and you can go to adding a new preset. So select the new preset, put in the name for your preset. I've already have mine set for greener grass and then hit create. I'm just gonna hit cancel. Once you've done that, you can always go back and select your preset that you've made. The adjustment brush itself also has its own settings. If you've seen some of my earlier tutorials, I do talk about the adjustment brush, but I'm gonna go over it again. You can see that there's an A, B, and erase button that you can select from. These are three presets that you can choose so you can change different brushes as you need them. The erase actually erases the mask, the adjustment mask that you make, and the A and B gives you a uh, mask painting brush. Adjustment brushes are non-destructive, so as you paint, they will not harm the image. You can always delete any adjustments, but just so you know, because you're doing an adjustment brush that's non-destructive, it does tend to be very slow on slower machines. The brush palette, as you see here, uh, mine is set to kind of a smaller setting here, and my feather setting is set up pretty high. Now you can see that, I'm gonna move that, that feather setting here. You can see that the feather setting is the outer ring, and the inner ring, is that sort of the, the whiter ring that's inside there that is the influence of that brush. You can see this, and I'll show this on the screen here as I paint in here. You can see the influence of the feather brush if you bring up your toolbar of your image window here. If you don't have that, hit the T key, it toggles it on and off, or go up to the view and hit the hide toolbar or show toolbar. So it's hidden now in the show toolbar. So down below, you will see in the toolbar, it will give you a context sensitive information about what tools are and options that you have here. It says show edit pins. I always set mine to auto, 
But right beside here is the show selected mask overlay. Turn that on so you can see what's going on here. I just did a, a little bit of quick painting here. You can see as I paint in here, you can see that my overlay is showing that softness. That's the influence of that feather. So if you want to make it a little stronger or make it a little lighter, you can see that if I go a little bit lighter, it's a little bit of a harder edge. Now I'm going to set my feather up to a nice soft. I like it nice and soft here. The next thing you want to set here is the flow. Make sure it's set to 100 and the auto mask. If you have a scroll wheel on your mouse, you will find that you can also change the size of the brush by just rolling the wheel up and down to change the size of that scroll brush. This is very handy when we're going to go in here and do some uh, finer painting. So I'm just going to start painting some of this image here. Just something you should know here as you're painting, wherever that inner circle is, that is the area that you are painting. So you see that I went over a little bit some of the areas. Don't worry about it too much. So I want, if I want to go a little bit finer brush, I'm going to take that to the edges there. So the Automax does a pretty good job of detecting edges, but if you go over with that inner circle, so let's just go over the water here. You can see if I paint on the water here with that inner circle, it goes right into the water. But if I don't paint on that edge, you can see the outer circle is not actually affecting that water. It's a pretty smart auto mask, but let's just go over a little bit here. There it is. It popped into there and went over top of that. So make sure that you, when you're painting an edge and you're trying to avoid that, I like to have that sort of that feather as my guideline of where I'm going to be painting and, and just sort of soften the effect there. So now that I've made some mistakes, I can go back and make some quick adjustments on fixing some of these mistakes that I've made here. I painted a little bit on, onto my duck here by accident, but those are easy to fix. You can either hit the erase button here in the brushes and it'll give me an erase brush. As you can see, there's a minus symbol now in the brush. So when I was in the A, it's a plus and erase, it's a minus. If you're on a Mac, you can hit the option key and it toggles it on and off. Uh, which should be on Windows and the Alt key. Make sure that you have the auto mask turned on as well. So I'm going to go over here and just make some adjustments, fix up some of my mistakes here, holding the Option key, and I'm just going to brush out those areas that I shouldn't have been in there. There we go. On my duck, I have a little bit on the tail there. Let's clean that up a little bit. Remember that I can always change the size of that brush so that I can do a bit finer details. So I'm just going to toggle it back on and off here, that mask, so you can see the mask by hitting the O key. And there we have our adjustment showing up. If you're not happy with this adjustment, you can always go back to your temperature up in the palette and make some adjustments there. So maybe that grass is a little too yellowish. You can always head towards a little bit more of a bluer end of things. This is where I find the adjustment actually works the best. Just making just a little bit of an adjustment of color so I can make some rich looking grass if I want a little bit more green. I can also adjust the luminance of this by going into the shadows. I'll, I still have some yellow patches in there. I can certainly go back in there and just make sure that I've, I've painted those in. I like to paint live, so I don't do it with the mask turned on. I turn off the mask. Let's just make some fine adjustments here. See, some of the mistakes that you know will happen is that you might get over the edges of your thing. So you can always go back in there and just make some quick adjustments and make sure that you have not turned things that shouldn't be green back to its original colors. There we go. That looks pretty good. So that's that's actually gotten most of the colors that I want to adjust. There we go. One last little bit. Just make a little bit of a shadow adjustment here. So you can always adjust these sliders afterwards, but I find that this baseline preset that I've set works pretty good until I need to go in there and make any light adjustments. Let's take a look at the before and after. So there's the before and after image. And when you're done, just hit the done button on the bottom of the toolbar. I'm always happy to hear and answer your comments and questions below. Please don't forget to subscribe to get the latest notices for new tutorials or videos. I'm Terrence Lamb from Stylex Studio. Thank you for watching.